Welcome to True Health Tuesdays. Today, something all health food nuts are looking forward to, how to recover from the holidays. Okay, now, now most of us have iron constitutions, never screw up. We're always raw, organic vegans. Right, okay, you're talking like one-tenth of one percent of the population. We're talking about real people here. Okay, now, some people find the holidays stressful. Anybody? Yeah, I don't do malls, and I went to two malls. It's a freaking nightmare. I mean, you know, you're driving around people. There's no license that, that, that really qualifies anyone to, to drive appropriately. I mean, I know in Europe it's a little bit different. They're smarter, okay. Uh, but, but when you look at this, I mean, you're in the fast lane. You're going the speed limit, which is like, you know, in California, it's about 20 miles an hour above the posted one. So you're zipping along about 80, 85, okay. And somebody is going slow. They need to pull over. Okay, does that piss off just me? Okay, so this is just getting to the freaking shopping centers. So, you know, and then forget the food, toxic substances. So, so we're going to go over certain things that, that you really need to do to, to deal with the stressors of the holidays. Okay, we're going to cover sleep disturbances, hangovers, uh, illnesses, because those things go up because of the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors, digestive issues. Okay, we're not going to bring up the dive bars of San Pedro that my friends wanted to go visit. You want some digestive issues? Yeah, yeah, get, get a um, meatball from Godmothers. I didn't have it, but it was pretty putrid, okay? <laughs> Depression and anxiety. So we're going to cover each one of these. Now, when you look at this, sleep disturbances, okay, jet lag, when you're flying to different, different parts of the country. Uh, staying up late, irregular sleep patterns, okay, sleeping in different beds or environments. What the biggest thing with this is, because I travel a lot to teach, live at the time zone you're at. No matter what, if you had no sleep, you know, go to bed at 10 to 10.30, get up at 4 to 4.30. You're going to reset your circadian rhythms, treat your, your environment just like you would, like all the tricks that we've taught. We're using the nightshades to cover your eyes. Um, you're reading 15 minutes before bed. All of those tricks work within 24 hours, man, you're done with jet lag. And, and the reason is, I mean, when you look at what sleep does, this is when your body literally increases its healing. So if you want to get over a chronic disease, this is what you do. Increases wound healing, it activates your immune system, maintains emotional balance, and this is just deep sleep. And I got to tell you, most people suck at sleeping. And do and, and you know how many times I'll go in there and I'll say, well, um, how do you sleep? Oh, I don't have any problem sleeping at all. I, I sleep just flying. You know, it's, it's like 10, 12 hours a day. Okay, good. Do you wake up refreshed or do you wake up tired? What are they going to say? Tired. Wake up tired. Yeah. So you suck at sleeping. Okay. Yeah, most insomniacs are in bed 10 to 12 hours a day. So we're talking about quality sleep. This is when you, you, you develop or, or interrupt the um, circadian rhythms. And that's what happens at the holidays. Um, good sleep increases antioxidant mechanisms, clearance of waste from the brain, restores the energy level of the cells, that's the ATP. Gro growth hormone increases clarity and retention of the memory, improves cognitive functions. And this is also, I mean, people for general health. We, do, we talk an entire hour on sleep. And when you realize that sleep restrictive therapy literally can reset the circadian rhythms, you have to. And one of the things with circadian rhythms is light is a primary clue. I mean, since we've had artificial light for the last, you know, 150 years, and people can work late, deep into the nights, it really has it, it caused a change in our, in our health patterns. Uh, so, um, and I love this, a healthy adult and trained to the sun will fall asleep a few hours after sunset experience body temperatures minimum at 6 a.m. and wake up a few hours after sunrise. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, I get here at about 4.45, about two and a half hours before sunrise. It's, I'll be leaving tonight at eight o'clock, about two and a half hours after sunrise. So this is the optimal, or after sunset, after sunset. And so, so when you look at this, this doesn't really hold with reality. You know, how many people have to get up before the sunrise and drive and get to work and have certain stressors? So realizing that this is optimal and a lot of us don't have the lifestyles to where we can hold along those. So, so let's just look at what we can do now. I mean, melatonin, it, it, now what's interesting, melatonin does not cause sleep, sleepiness. Okay, it is used to reset that circadian rhythm. This, this natural balance that we need to have in order to get good sleep. And good sleep, that's the key for reverse in disease. Okay, does, does that make sense? And so we, this is something that we have to master. Now, blue lights interrupt melatonin production. That means cell phones, TVs, computers. Uh, I, I mean, it's uh, almost any electronic device is going to emit this light that interrupts melatonin production, which is going to screw up the sleep patterns. So what can you do? Um, natural sources of melatonin. It's on your sheet. I know it, seem, it seems too simple that fresh fruit, cherries, bananas, pineapples, oranges, grapes, plums, olive oil. Now, wine and beer, interesting. The, when you're looking at more of the red wine and the darker beers are going to be better for you. If you drink too much, the alcohol is going to interrupt REM state of sleep. So this we're talking minimal, minimal. Now, if you look at the book, The Blue Zones, you're talking the areas around the world where the longest lived human beings come from. And one of them, um, Sardinia, the males drink about seven liters of red wine a month. Does that seem like a lot? I read that, it blew me away. There's no freaking way I could do seven liters <laughs> in a 30 day period. I mean, these guys are tough, okay? So now, what do you do for the sleep, especially during the holidays? Reduce the stressors, you know, start doing that sleep restrictive pattern. Uh, improve your sleep environment. This means get the nightshades at nighttime because every 90 minutes, I mean, if you're doing really, really good professional sleeping, every 90 minutes your eyes open and then they close. And if there's any kind of stimulus there, bam, you, get, you have to get up, okay, to check the safety of the environment. And people will lie to themselves and they say, oh, I had to get up to pee. Really? Okay, do you have a lot of volume when you go to pee? No. No, it was just you had to get up to make sure the cave was safe, and you thought, oh, okay, I'll go pee. <laughs> and, and no, honest to God, because people don't, you're not going to see a herd of zebras laying in the field, and then, you know, one of them gets up and has to go pee, and then comes back and lays down. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Okay, okay, you go to sleep, you're going to go to sleep. So that means that we're having these, these interruptions of our natural circadian rhythms. Keep a regular sleep schedule. As tough as this is, particularly if you're traveling to a new environment, and restrict your sleep to six, six and a half hours a night. It's interesting, when you look at our sleep lecture, greater than eight hours of sleep, there's higher disease rates. Less than five hours of sleep, there's higher disease rates. So, so there's an optimum space in there for tissue regeneration and deep sleep. We just gotta get master, I mean, be professional sleepers. Uh, avoid excessive stimulation. Okay, so um, and did anyone party on New Year's? <laughs> okay, okay, this is a room full of um, very boring people. Okay, well, okay, honest to God, okay, New Year's Eve, we're watching a Gilligan's Island marathon. <laughs> I'm not kidding, honest to God. Okay, we all pass out at about 8.30, 9 o'clock, okay, sleeping with the TV on, so really poor environment. Okay, so I turn off the TV, go to bed, and at nighttime, about midnight, guess what we hear? Um, See, so our boat's in a marina, and that was automatic weapons fire. Okay, and Sarah thought it was somebody knocking at the door. I said, no, dear, people fire automatic weapons in the air on New Year's. So when it says avoid excessive stimulation, sometimes that's beyond your control. 
What, you're thinking that the bullets go up, they might come down. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, firing them into the ground, okay, maybe, but, you know, they might hit a rock and ricochet, you know. Best to fire blanks, not real lead bullets, okay. It's just, they do come down. Yeah, and exercise regularly. What's regularly? Um, half hour a day. Half hour a day, no matter what, Monday through Monday, okay. You have to get it in every day. Uh, yoga is exercise. Okay, chocolate flavor is the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the scientific term for um, hangovers is uh, vesialgia. Okay, now, um, if you've never had a hangover, this is what it feels like. Okay, headaches, dizziness, fatigue, nausea, stomach problems, drowsiness, sweating, excessive thirst, cognitive funkiness. Now, According to Harvard, okay, th the alcohol is metabolized to a very toxic substance, acetylaldehyde, and this is dangerous. Okay, drinking interferes with brain activity during sleep, so hanger, hangover feels like sleep deprivation. It's interesting, too, because it also depends on how your body can break this down. Um, alcohol scrambles the hormones that regulate our biologic clocks. It can feel like jet lag or vice versa, and it also depends on your history. Now, if you're generationally, if your body has been exposed or your ancestors' bodies, like your grandfather, great-grandfather, like let's say you're from Northern Europe. Northern Europe, I mean, beer for breakfast in England. Okay, they did that all through the um, Middle Ages and this was very common because the water was, or the beer was safer than the water. Okay, and, and so you look, Northern Europeans have a tremendous amount of peroxomes in their liver so they can metabolize the alcohol and get it out of their systems. Some cultures, like Native Americans, didn't, didn't have that exposure generationally. So they have very few peroxomes in the liver. So a couple of little shots, you know, to somebody without peroxomes or that number of peroxomes drives them crazy. So this is why some people can tolerate higher alcohol levels than other. I mean, it's poisonous to all humans, so, but it depends on your number of peroxomes and your ancestry on how you can metabolize it. But any alcohol, it's going to negatively affect the pancreas, pancreatitis, um, liver problems long term, problems with the frontal lobe, that's impulse control areas, uh, gastric motility, damages the digestive tract, um, interrupts B vitamins, this is because it's also damaging the small bowel, disrupts your microflora, so that's going to be hormone problems, it's going to be immune system issues, inhibits more hormone production, weakens your immune system. So what do they do? I mean, you know, the old school saying is, would you rather be shot by a 357 or a 45? <laughs> Neither. Neither would be good, you know. So what's the best cure for a hangover? Don't do it. You know, you might say, hey, look, you know, drink some coconut water before. Drink, drink a lot of water in between, and that would kill the buzz. But you won't get us hungover. Okay, so, so you got to kind of balance this. Now, let's say that you, you didn't listen to that, you imbibed a little too much. These are solutions from around the world. Prawn salad. So now think about this. You've got the proteins from, from the seafood. You're going to have some dilation there because they're going to have some peppers, some fresh oils. Pickled herring, which makes sense out of Germany. That's what, that's what I mean, that's the pickled herring on the roll. But when you look at that, okay, so you're talking about healthy um, microbes, healthy probiotics on this. Beer in the Netherlands. Beer is actually one of those things that stimulate melatonin production. And, you know, in England, a bit of the hair of the dog that bit you. Okay, but, you know, not to excess. You don't drink enough beer to get your back inebriated again. Pickled plums, again, that helps with replacing that healthy bacteria in the gut. Uh, strong green tea from China, that's going to be a stimulus. Tripe soup, that's, that's the old one, that's also menudo in Mexico. Bacon sandwich in England, 
okay? Sauna, which makes a lot of sense, okay? Because you're gonna detox your body, but if you're gonna use a sauna after a hangover, hydrate. Because remember, alcohol dehydrates the heck out of you, and you're gonna be sweating like crazy. So make sure you get minerals, coconut water, hydrate like mad. Pickle juice from Poland tomato juice and raw eggs which but if you're going to do the raw egg make sure they're super healthy animals because we have so many toxic animals when you're saying raw eggs you're talking that's a major risk of salmonella so you got to know where the the animals are coming from but tomato juice super high in vitamin c now so these are some of the tips if you've and i know you're thinking where was i at the beginning of new year's this would have been helpful sorry <laughs> <laughs> replay this December 31st 2017 okay so hydrate your body two to three liters of water okay now now adding minerals okay like sea salt lemon juice it's going to help alkalinize your system but it also getting minerals in the water is going to help put that fluid into the cells so this is going to be vital coconut water oh my god super high in electrolytes so, and, and, you know, I mean, you can do, what is it, pina coladas, things like that, but that's really not real coconut water, okay? It's going to be like coconut flavored stuff, okay? So downing this would be a great idea. And definitely, definitely, if you're going to imbibe, do not drive. I mean, in Huntington Beach, they've got a brilliant car that's that's parked. The, the front half is painted yellow like a taxi cab. The back half is painted like a police car. Okay, and they say, you pick your ride. Okay, so so really, I mean, it, it's... It's devastating for, for you if you get caught, but it's even worse if you get, if you injure someone else. You know, so just, just don't do that, Uber it. Okay, vegetable juices, super high in minerals, and, and also too, the vegetables are root vegetables. They're gonna be replacing, they're gonna have anti-mold properties, it's gonna be fantastic. B vitamins help detox the liver. Uh, healthy protein and fats eggs, avocado, spinach, exercise in the sauna. Make sure you hydrate before you get in there and swim in the ocean, saltwater pool. Okay, now make sure the ocean is an appropriate temperature. We actually have pretty much regularly down at the marina, um, people that have a challenge walking because they've had a couple too much, go swimming not on purpose. <laughs> okay, which is okay, but hypothermia is going to set in in about an hour up here. So that's bad. Yeah, yeah. And, and what, what's kind of nice on, on a couple of the boats, they're dropping the ladders off of the boat in the water because, you know, the dock's up so high that if you fall in, it's really hard to climb out, particularly if you're drunk and freezing. <laughs> to God. So we go through and drop a bunch of ladders in the water. And it's a weird world. Okay, now, you've heard of flu season. There's no such thing as flu season. There is a thing as vitamin D deficiency season because, I mean, if you look at physical, chemical, and emotional stress, those all go up at this time. Emotional stress is going to weaken your immune system. Physical stress of the poor sleep and everything, that's going to weaken your immune system. But it's mainly vitamin D deficiency season. There is no flu jab deficiency season. I mean, that's insane. <clears throat> now, vitamin D, not only is it Vitamin D deficiency is one of the leading um, predisposo predispositions that you have to have to develop cancer. Okay, it's true. When you look at certain areas around the planet that are close to the equator, they have, I mean, virtually cancer-free zones. So vital, important regulatory functions on cells, the innate as well as adaptive immune system response and vitamin D insufficiency leads to dysregulation of the immune system responses. You absolutely need vitamin D. You get anything less and it's, I mean, you have to, at least 8,000 international units a day. And in times like this, when it's winter time, you know, you got to supplement. There's, there's no getting around it. And you can get some vitamin D with some of the omega-3s, but you really need to, to supplement. Now, vitamin D and K2 work hand-in-hand hand together. 
So this is where the fermented foods come in. All this makes sense. This is why all those hangover cures with the fermented foods, the pickled this. Think of the healthy bacteria. So you're going to be replacing it inside of the gut. Grass-fed animal products, fermented foods, brie cheeses, amazing, um, uh, uh, absolutely essential. Now, phototherapy vitamin D. Now, this was one of the presents that I got from my daughter-in-law who's from Poland. This is common practice in Europe, okay, and most every other country of the world except for here, where you stand in front of a narrow UVB band, and some of the best bulbs are Philips certified, Soul, Soul Arc Systems is one of the best, but this you literally stand there and you generate vitamin D3, stand there for 20 minutes a day. And this is talk about anti-cancer, but it actually penetrates the skin. Now, if you're going to do this, make sure that you don't shower immediately. You should, you know, get exposed because the vitamin D is produced by the skin. And if you shower, you can actually wash off the, the benefits from it. Now, vitamin C essential. Now, if you're in an area that you don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables, frozen still maintain a lot of their nutrients, a lot of their antioxidants. We're talking between 90 and 95 percent. So make sure they're as organic as you can get. But oranges, red peppers, kale, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, strawberries, grapefruit, guava, kiwi, green peppers. Do you know peppers have like two to four times the amount of vitamin C than an orange? And I gotta tell you, they taste great in a chili right now. I mean, just amazing. Now, digestive problems for the holidays. Stay away from the dive bars in San Pedro. <laughs> Wait, no, no, I'm sorry. I was just kind of reading that and no, I'm, yeah, don't do that. Okay, so when you're talking bloating, gas, cramps, constipation, nausea, diarrhea, what are the causes? I mean, it's, it's not far-fetched to say if you put toxic substances in, your body's going to respond like it's been poisoned. And that's truly what it is. So non-organic food, toxic processed foods. One of our patients, God bless her, she was severely vaccine damaged. Okay, severely. Leaky gut, everything. And this gal is on fire. I mean, super, super focused. So she comes in and brought us these oatmeal cookies, which they're raw, vegan, organic, healthy oils. Um, you know, I mean, the best uh, quality substances, ingredients. My God, they were incredible. So you can have junk food and have it good. Okay, it's, it's doable. Antibiotics and food is so prevalent out there. If there's any grain product that's not organic and you're living in America, you're going to have an antibiotic called glyphosates in there. Um, excessive alcohol consumption, again, that destroys the micro gut flora. It weakens your immune system. Anti medications. And one of the worst medications is, is a pain reliever called Tylenol. Now, alcohol damages the liver. The leading cause of kidney disease or liver disease in this country is Tylenol, acetaminophen. So, I mean, it's mind boggling. Plus, it destroys glutathione and weakens that blood brain barrier. So, if you're sick, if you're feeling bad, okay, hydrate. Don't drug yourself with Tylenol. That's way worse. And then chronic stressors. So, what are the solutions? By gosh, that's why we got this sheet. Tons of solutions on here. Okay, fermented vegetables, probiotic supplements, organic plant-based diet, it, juicing and blending with the root vegetable juices, blending the fruits, um, increase omega-3s. That's going to help protect the frontal lobe. I mean, it just seems so simple that if we're caught poisoning ourselves, that putting healthy stuff in is better. You know, it, it's, it's almost too simple. Um, the, the fermented foods, incredibly valuable, particularly at this time. This is why, I mean, through all the areas of Northern Europe and North America, they would pack the vegetables that they would collect in the summertime. They would ferment, and that fermentation would not only preserve it, but it would help break it down, and it created healthy vitamins and minerals. This is why, I mean, fermented foods have such healing properties to them. Amazing. 
So kefir, kombucha, sauerkraut. If you're going to get sauerkraut, make sure that you're getting it from the refrigerated section because most, most stores will have sauerkraut that's been pasteurized and it's sitting on a shelf. If you see sauerkraut on a regular unrefrigerated shelf, that has been pasteurized, all the bacteria, and it's dead. Okay, you need something that's refrigerated because that refrigeration is going to slow that, that breakdown process, that fermentation. Yeah, you put something that has living bacteria, man, we're talking bottles are going to be exploding. Um, now, depression and anxiety. This is huge. Now, we're talking serotonin. So now, for eating stuff, so most serotonin is going to be produced and stored in the gut. Any type, well, the functions of serotonin regulates intestinal movement, regulates mood, plays a role in cognitive function, uh, vago, vasoconstrictor, so it regulates homeostasis and blood clotting, uh, growth factor for certain types of cells and wound healing, regulates bone mass, so if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, take an x-ray, see if you got a leaky gut. <laughs> So you're not going to fix the osteoporosis, okay? You fix the gut and it goes away. How fast? About four to six weeks. How do I know that? If you break a bone, how fast does it heal? About four to six weeks. So healing osteoporosis is pretty easy. Okay, regulates cardiovascular growth. Okay, now when you look at this, um, serotonin is produced from tryptophan. And you might think, Turkey. I knew it. I knew someone would. Yeah, it, and it does have a mellowing effect on your body if you eat a lot of turkey. Okay, but 90% of it is located in the gut. Uh, and when we look at this, I love the Journal of Psychiatry and Neuroscience. Little is known about the specific contribution of serotonin to the neurobiology of emotional and mood of healthy people. It's true. And in fact, when you look at the drugs they give for antidepressant, uh, they're called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So even the drug companies think, you know, serotonin's got to have something to do with this. But when you look at the mechanism action of those, uh, the antidepressants, it says mechanism action is unknown. It's believed to affect serotonin. You know, however, side effect of the drugs is suicide, suicidal thoughts. So, honest to God. So let's look at the medications known to cause depression. Benzodiazepams, uh, blood pressure drugs, beta blockers, steroids, and contraceptives. Yeah, the birth control pills, okay, can cause depression. Sedatives, opioids, and other painkillers. Amphetamines, so how many people out there are taking Ritalin? You know, because of tension deficit disorder. Then they develop adrenal fatigue, then they get depression. And antidepressants are known to cause depression. It says it on the label. Honest to God. I mean, all you got to do is read the friggin' label. And it's like, really? Why would a doctor, where's the ethical and moral, you know, basis of prescribing something that causes a disease that you're trying to friggin' prevent? Jesus. They're, they're not doctors anymore. Okay. Sugar. When you refine out, I mean, you got to figure that, that a full-on diabetic can drink sugar cane juice, okay? And this is because it's loaded with minerals. But if you refine that, it's poisonous, okay? One of the main reasons is because it suppresses a key growth hormone called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Now, this plays a vital role in memory, but also it's critically low in people with depression. So when you get this, Sugar suppresses that. And do you know how many people are saying, well, you know, you know, I get this sugar, you know, I, I, I got this sugar craving. I get no, you're not craving sugar. You're craving either water or some type of energy source. So look at your body. Increase the fat intake. That's a long-term energy source. Get um, healthy sugars, sugar with minerals. Okay, honey, there's a lot of different things that you can do for sweetness. I got to tell you, you take a banana, put a little bit of raw honey on top, that's going to satisfy a lot of, lot of uh, cravings. Uh, British Medical Journal, or British Journal of Psychiatry, a diet which contained a lot of processed foods, 58% increase in risk of depression. And what are we talking about in America? The number one source of calories in America is genetically modified high fructose corn syrup. I mean, absolutely insane. MSG. Now, we do have a conspiracy in this country 
where you can call MSG any one of these, put it in a food label because people are getting smarter. They're actually reading the label. How dare you? Hopefully they'll pass laws so they can put genetically modified foods to where you don't need to read the labels. Yes, the government will take care of you. This is what you can put in there, okay, to, to hide monosodium glutamate. Now, glutamate is an excitotoxin. This is poisonous, okay? Uh, researchers have discovered that most people with major depressive disorder have higher levels of the neurotransmitter glutamate in their CSF, or cerebral spinal fluid, and blood plasma. Free glutamate outside of the neurons is very toxic to the brain connections and brain themselves. It's excitotoxicity. Now, this is gonna be MSG. The number of names, okay, you have to be really cautious. Pretty much, if it's in a package, really be suspect. If it says 100% organic and it has ingredients of what the food is, it's probably okay. If not, you know, get it fresh. It's, it's too important. So when we talk about this, about the five keys to health, proper nerve supply, regular exercise, proper nutrition, sufficient rest and prayer meditation, this is how you survive, not just the holidays, but we're talking about any type of diagnosis. I mean, when you look at this, the nervous system controls and coordinates every function of the body. When we're talking mental, emotional improvement, Journal of Upper Cervical Chiropractic, I mean, these are patients, okay, uh, normal, and someone with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about this, uh, you've, you've heard of how stress kills, right? I'm gonna explain the clinical mechanism of how stress kills. Um, my wife's got a, a friend of hers who's a physician's assistant. She comes out here from New York, and I look at her x-rays. This isn't her, but I look at her x-rays, and I go, and I go, my God, do you got heart palpitations? How did you know that? <laughs> you know, because she's a physician's assistant. She knows everything, and that's what they're taught. You know everything. You can now go forth and be smarter than the body, okay? Well, here's how a body is. Here's the right side, here's the left side. Okay, these are the spinous processes. They're shoved all the way over on the right side. See, what happens is the liver is connected to the right trapezius muscle. So, so if you have right shoulder pain, right shoulder issues, on a di it's called a DDX, differential diagnosis, you gotta look at the liver because it might not be the shoulder, it might be something to do with the liver. Okay, that's, that's how the body works. Well, the liver, under stress, or if your body is under stress or a stressful environment, like let's say you're being tortured to death because you're in a prison camp or in a crappy relationship, okay? You're being tortured, you got slow, so your body is gonna, your adrenal glands are gonna produce the epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol, all the stress hormones, and the liver's gotta work harder and harder and harder to process these. Well, that increases the tone of this muscle here. Now, the sympathetic nerve supply to the heart is T1 through T4. So you get this muscle that's getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. Pulling those bones over, okay, eventually they get pulled over so far, bam, those bones are gonna affect the nervous system, which is gonna fire a sympathetic charge down to the heart, putting the heart in ventricular fibrillation, which stops the heart. Okay, so how does stress kill? By God, you can see it here. Okay, you see this and you can say, man, that's long-term stress. You're in deep trouble. <coughs> we gotta fix this. And you know what they're gonna say typically? Oh yeah, well I'm taking you know the three antidepressants, the blood pressure drugs and the cho cholesterol drugs because my doctor really wants my cholesterol levels low. So is that freaking guy blind? Does he, did he not take anatomy or physiology? What the hell is going on? Okay, exercise. Here's a shocker, 30 minutes a day. Exercise is at least as good as antidepressants. No kidding, exercise can increase the number of cells in your brain in the regions of the brain called the hippocampus. So does meditation. I mean, it's amazing. Just walking a half hour a day if you can walk barefoot. I mean, the, the temperature in Israel, is it pretty warm now? Florida, okay. Yeah, yeah England wouldn't, but you know, Florida's okay. <laughs> Find a place where you can walk barefoot. It works, okay? When we talk about proper nutrition, we're talking about vitamin D, omega-3s, from the small fish. It's so simple. Meditation. 
When you look at this, researchers, Harvard, Yale, and MIT, those guys usually don't agree on shit. Our data suggests that meditation practice can promote cortical plasticity in adults, areas for cognitive and emotional processing and well-being. Why don't psychiatrists or psychologists, why don't they say, man, we got to get your nervous system checked. Um, if man makes it, you don't eat it. Make sure you stay the hell away from excitotoxins. So you're going to read what you're putting in your body. You're going to walk a half hour a day. I got data that walking is good for you. Okay. We're going to retrain your brain to sleep and we're going to fix the expression of life that you're having now, which is called depression or anxiety. We're going to turn that around and help you build up your serotonin. No, in psycho world, here, I'm going to give you this drug that has a black box warning that says it increases suicide and suicidal thoughts. Welcome to fucking crazy world. Okay? Yeah, no. We're going to respect the body. Okay, from here on out. Any doctor that does it, we fire him. Okay?